It's Monday, April 31st, 2012. Get ready for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. More speculation into the death of Andrew Breitbart as his coroner turns up dead in Los Angeles and arsenic poisoning is suspected. Then, according to a newly released instructional video by the NSI, public photography is terrorism. Plus, the Department of Justice confirms Russian troops to train on U.S. soil. And finally, exposing false flag terrorism and battling the TSA has now become a congressional campaign issue. Alex Jones talks with Kurt Haskell. All this and more coming up tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. And now, Alex Jones. Let's get right into the headlines. The ultimate green bombshell. New study finds wind farms actually cause climate change, not to mention killing all the local birds. After years of searching, it appears that scientists have finally identified an actual cause of climate change. Wind farms. Well, in Telegraph reports, usually at night, the air closer to the ground becomes colder. When the sun goes down and the earth cools, but on huge wind farms, the motion of the turbines mixes the air higher in the atmosphere that is warming, pushing up the overall temperature. Satellite data over a large area of Texas. You know, you can't drive anywhere in West Texas to see the beautiful mountains anymore. It's all just wind farms that Al Gore makes money off of. It is now covered by four of the world's largest wind farms found that over a decade, the local temperature went up almost one degree Celsius as more turbines are built. Kind of like Bill Gates owns the big weather weapon company. He can just launch tornadoes whenever he wants and say, pay Al Gore and me money, or it's all over. And there's the spoils of green fascism, death by turbine. Yeah, that's the reports I've seen. You want all your local birds dead? <laughs> You want dead birds? You want blood? You got it. Blood on the streets, blood on the rocks, blood every which way, you got it. You want some dead bats? We got it. If you want blood, we got it. Hmm. Continuing here. Uh, this could have long-term effects on, on wildlife. Who cares as long as it goes to select contributors to the globalists? <laughs> this could have long-term effects on wildlife like GMO does you're not worried about in the immediate areas of larger wind farms, really. It could also affect regional weather patterns as warmer areas affect the formation of clouds and even wild species. Gee, you think chemtrails are having any effect? What about those? But again, the government loves us. Oh, but here's another report. If we just kill the humans, the earth would be saved. This was in Reuters, this was in AP, everywhere it was collectivize everything. Give your money to Lord Rothschild and have a huge die off of humans. Gee, won't the world be wonderful when you're dead? And the yuppies are like, yeah, kill me. Of course they mean their neighbor. I hate my neighbor as much as I hate myself. International scientific order needs to facilitate the big die off. That's a quote. Top UN advisor says, and it goes overall, of the report, it says economic and other developments that lead to the reduction in population towards an optimum level for maximization of quality of life, they mean for the globalist, i.e. environmentally benign development that reduces the birth rate. Well, the West is having 1.3 kids for every two people, so we're, we're pretty much dead. Great job. And uh, one in 58 has autism, soon to be one in five. The cancer rates are 10,000 percent in kids. What a quality of life. Lots of little coffins you sons of bitches are involved in. There's no teleprompter here, you understand. Furthermore, the emeritus professor writes bluntly, the big die-off has already begun. <laughs> Absolutely right. Uh, the gullible public takes those big old juicy shots full of cancer viruses and drinks that fluoride water. Every day, another scumbag talks about how they're murdering us, like the White House signs are bragging about that fluoride. Nothing like bone cancer sevenfold in men. Another little gift by the chicken neck nerd. <laughs> oh, the guy on a motorcycle acting tough isn't a threat. It's the little nerd who people weren't nice to in school. 
He sits back and goes, keep drinking that water, keep taking those shots. I'm murdering you. <laughs> I'm murdering you, and I'm going to go on murdering you because I'm trendy. Let's continue. We've got uh, the federal government and other groups. NSI instructional video, public photography is terrorism. Well, sure, government's going to cram a camera up your rear end, but you don't videotape them, you're going to prison in life like folks in Illinois. According to the video, street photography and photography of public buildings provides justification for further analysis by the narcotics trafficking police. Although the video emphasizes the photography and other similar activities are protected, activities under connected to other suspicious activities that would incite potential terrorism like the feds blowing up, blowing up Oklahoma City. This may cause the officer, I mean the federal minion, to conduct additional observation or gather additional information, again taking into account the totality of circumstances. Continuing here with the news, we have CBS. CBS runs defense for everyone's terrorist FBI flyers, where they say wearing jeans, having children, having a cell phone, ordering coffee, paying with cash. They actually get on there and say, hey, the war on terror against Al-Qaeda that the feds are giving control of Libya and other countries, that's over. The war is on you. So get used to it. We're going to have drones watching you. In a brazen headline story entitled, Are You a Terrorist? CBS 12 leads the uh, flyer's credence by completely failing to mention the fact that they include a list of mundane behaviors that have nothing to do with terrorism or any relation to suspicious activity whatsoever. How about see something, say something, the feds getting Mutalib on the aircraft, the underwear bomber, without a passport, that's coming up. Or how about the New York Times admitting that the FBI is staging terror Saturday? That was in their news. How about that? How about we don't learn to be little fear-filled minions of the system and realize criminal foreign corporations are staging terror attacks to sell us on tyranny? Continuing with teleprompter free news. Trail of death. Breitbart coroner turns up dead. Arsenic poisoning suspected. Well, no, the police say he's dead from poisoning, but they're saying, move along. He died of poisoning. We're not sure what did it. Go back to sleep, America. Everything is just fine. And finishing up with the story we covered Friday that people had trouble believing. Yes, it's true. No, it's not just true that coroners about to release a report die. That's no big deal. No, it's true. DOD confirms Russian troops to train on U.S. soil to take on the American people. The Department of Defense has confirmed foreign military reports that Russian troops are set to target terrorists on American soil as part of an unprecedented joint drill for the United States, which will take place in Colorado next month. Airborne troops from Russia are set to take place in the drills focused around targeting terrorist Americans. The American pigs do not like the Federal Reserve, die. Continuing, although it marks the first time Russian troops will train on U.S. soil, soldiers from a plethora of different nations have been involved in similar drills for well over a decade that we have documented. We're about to come back with Mr. Haskell with some key intelligence. He's running for Congress, but first, Hunter S. Thompson. We have a quote for you. Politics is the art of controlling your environment. That is certainly true. The elite want to get us out of the environment and to trick us into our own extermination, they are creating this artificial habitat of fear to get us into their trap so they can then accelerate their soft kill operations. All right, we'll be right back after this quick break. If you're not a subscriber, become one today. You're out there watching it online at YouTube and other sites where millions of people watch the show every week. That's great. Why not get five or six memberships for the price of one, 15 cents a day, Get a 15-day free trial, prisonplanet.tv, and help us expand our reporters, our writers, our researchers in the face of the globalist. There's nowhere where you get a bigger bang for your buck than prisonplanet.tv. Good evening. I'm Todd Foster reporting for Infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. 
This evening, we're going to be discussing the issue of driver's license requirement here in the United States. What is a driver's license? Do you need a driver's license? Is there any law requiring you to have a driver's license? A driver's license is required for one who is conducting commerce on the highways. Now, if you're doing personal travel along the highways or personal transportation, there's no law saying that you need a driver's license. Now, I'd like to read to you something here from Bovier's Law Dictionary. One employed in conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle with horses, mules, or other animals. Now that is Bovier's definition of a driver. There's no mention about personal transportation in there or anything. Now notice under part three of that definition, it states that the driver must be of good habits for the journey and possess good skills. Because if he's not, and there's an accident or an injury, the driver and his employers, yes, that's right, I said employers, are responsible. Now, while the definition of driver does change a little bit over the years, there is a U.S. Supreme Court case, Reno v. Condon, which states, the activity licensed by state DMVs and in connection with which individuals must submit personal information to the DMV, the operations of motor vehicles is itself intricately related to interstate commerce. definitely has a problem. A problem? Many. And I believe the problem with America is that we think we have too many problems. I mean, there's a lot of problems. Gosh, where do I start? Texas. I would have to say D.C. To greed in politics. Our economy. Poverty. Freedom. Corruption. We are just never satisfied. It's always more, more, and more. It's not really much of a problem. I think America's problem is that people think they have more money than they think they have. I think it's ignorance. I think people need to be more aware of the political landscape. Maybe that everything's so spread out and uh, you have to, like, drive. The uh, underdog, middle guy is always getting screwed. Belief in God. The lack thereof. Our deity, or what we serve is money. Greed, money. I work close to, like, Medicare. Medicare will stop taking care of a patient when they don't have money. Um, I see people that rob banks. Why do they rob a bank if they're needing food or if they're needing clothing? Why don't they rob the food? Well, I'm afraid for the short term that there's going to be more income disparity from the, the very rich and, you know, more loss of middle class. I mean, in the end, it's all about money. I mean, I think it definitely has a purpose if it's used for the right reasons. We're so infatuated as money is a need, but in actuality, a need is something like water. If you don't have water on the earth, then we 